As part of Linux commands for beginners, so far we have gone through details related to all aspects associated with files and folders. We started with setting up the environment, then we have gone through the details about getting started with Linux shell commands, then we got into the details about listing and finding files and folders in Linux, also how to process data in files using certain Linux commands. Also we have spent enough time to understand file and folder properties, then we have gone through the details about managing files and folders in Linux using commands such as cp, mv, rm, etc. As we have spent quite a lot of time understanding all the aspects related to files and folders using Linux commands. Now it is time for us to explore the system commands in Linux. We'll start with all of core components of a computer such as memory, CPU, storage, etc. Then we'll actually go through the details about how to get CPU details using LSCPU command. Then we'll go through the details about free which actually give us memory details. After going through LSCPU and free, we'll also see the details about storage using df command. Also we should be able to use a command called as du to get the usage of a file or folder on the hard drive. It will actually give us the disk usage details for a given file or folder. Then we'll actually go through the automations around du command in conjunction with commands such as sort, find, etc. We'll perform few tasks around finding the largest files and folders using du and other commands. By the end of the section or module, you will not only be comfortable with commands such as lscpu, free, df, and du, you will also touch some of the automations around du command. These can come handy in troubleshooting some of the issues not only as part of of your work environment, even as part of your personal computers, you should be able to understand how your hard drive is being used. Whether the hard drive is effectively used or not, you should be able to troubleshoot. And also you can actually take required actions to reclaim the wasted storage uh, with unnecessary files. That being said, make sure you spend time and understand all these important commands in detail. Yes, part of the sectional model, we are going through the details related to basic system commands in Linux. Before going through the basic uh, system commands such as LS, CPU, Free, DF, DU, etc., let's get an overview of a computer. A computer is nothing but a combination of CPU, memory, storage. Those are the core components. On top of it, you will be having motherboard, there will be a case around it. Uh, then it will be treated as a laptop or desktop. That being said, the core components of a computer are nothing but CPU, memory, storage. Also, network interface card is also very important which will facilitate us to connect to the external world. That being said, once we get the computer, we install operating system on top of it and then we install software on top of it. Now, let's get an overview about CPU, memory and storage for our Windows system. Then we'll actually go through the details related to the important commands in Linux to get similar details. Now, to get information about your uh, Windows uh, desktop, you can actually go to the File Explorer. Uh, first, I'll start with uh, the uh, storage. You can actually go to this PC here and you should be able to see the details related to the storage. When it comes to this computer, there are two drives, C drive and D drive. D drive is temporary storage. C drive is permanent one. You can see that uh, there is uh, 128 GB storage on this. Overall, we have 128 GB of storage on this C drive. Now, if you wanted to get the details about memory as well as the CPU, there are multiple ways to get it. One, you can actually right click on this PC, then click on properties. You will get details about the memory. You can see that the system has 16 GB memory. You can also get the details about CPU. However, it is not quite obvious whether we have quad core or dual core or octa core CPU, which means whether we have two processors if it is dual core, four processors if it is quad core, eight processors if it is octa core and so forth. That information is not apparent or obvious by looking at these details. To get the number of processors or cores for this system, you can actually open the task manager. Let me see how I can actually get into the task manager. In the older versions of Windows, you should be able to get the task manager from here, but now it is not showing. We can actually go to the search and then search for task manager here. For some reason, the text is gone. Let me search for task manager. You see the task manager app, you should be able to click on this. Then you can actually go to the performance. You should be able to see the details here. Uh, when it comes to the storage, it is 128 GB. You can see that disk is selected here. You can also get the details about the memory here. You can see that uh, it has total 16 GB memory. It is showing here itself. As of now, 3.9 GB is in usage. 12.1 uh, GB is free. Now, when it comes to the CPU, you should be able to get the details of CPU by clicking on this. As part of this uh, screen, you should be interpreting sockets, cores, 
and logical process. When it comes to sockets, there is only one socket, which means there is only one CPU. When it comes to cores, there are two cores in this one CPU, which means the CPU is a dual core CPU. That's why it is saying two. These are physical cores. However, depending upon the nature of the CPU and also the nature of workloads, we can actually define logical number of processors also. By default for this uh, machine, the logical process is for, in many cases, you might be able to customize this as well. Don't worry too much about it. For now, just keep in mind that we have one CPU. It is nothing but dual core CPU. So CPU is one with uh, two cores in it. We have 16 GB memory. And then when it comes to storage, we have two drives, C drive and a D drive. D drive is a temporary storage. As part of the C drive, we have 128 GB. This is how you should be able to get details about the core components of a computer or a laptop or a desktop. Now let's go to the details about how to get these details using Linux commands. I'll be covering the details in multiple lectures in this sectional module. As part of this section, we are going through the details related to basic system commands in Linux to get the details about CPU, memory, storage, etc. Already we have gotten an overview about core components of a computer which are nothing but CPU, memory and disk or storage. In this lecture, let's go through the details about how to get details about the CPU on a Linux based system. When it comes to this Windows system, we have one socket which means one CPU. It have a two core CPU uh, which means we have one dual core CPU. Now let's see how we can actually get those details using Linux. When it comes to the Linux, there is a command called as lscpu. It will actually give us the details about the CPU related to a computer on which Linux operating system is installed. Now let me hit enter. You can see the details here. You can see that there is one socket. When it comes to cores, there are two cores in this socket, which means it's a dual core CPU. However, each core have two threads. You can see the details here. As we have two threads per core, uh, total uh, CPUs are nothing but four. You can see the details here. Also for each of these four CPUs, there will be ID. You can see the ID ranges here. The ID ranges are in between zero to three. This is how you should be able to get the details of the system on which Linux is installed. The command which we have used is nothing but LS CPU. That being said, you can also get some advanced details such as cache details and also the speed details by interpreting this information. For regular users like us, they are not that important. As long as we have the details about how many CPUs we have, how many cores we have in each CPU and also how many threads we have per core. This is the information which is important as regular users of Linux based operating system on top of a computer. You can also get more details about lscpu command by saying lscpu hyphen hyphen help. You can see there are quite a few control arguments. You can explore those and you should be able to get more details about your CPU. LSCPU is a very important command to understand details about your CPU associated with the computer on which you are actually using this Linux based operating system. That being said, as we have got the details related to LSCPU or how to get the details related to the CPU using LSCPU, now it is time for us to understand how to get the details about the memory that is associated with this system. As part of this sectional module, we are going through the details about basic system commands in Linux to actually get details about the core components. The core components of a computer are nothing but CPU, memory and storage. After getting an overview about these using Windows, we have even gone through the command called as lscpu to get CPU details using Linux based operating system. Now let's understand how to get the details of memory in Linux using a command called as free. Keep in mind that this Linux based system is set up on top of Windows using WSL and hence whatever details you are seeing as part of this Windows based system might reflect even as part of Linux. That's why as part of the previous lecture when we have gone through the lscpu command most of the details you have seen here are visible even as part of the output of the lscpu command. When it comes to the memory details you can see that there is total 16 GB memory on the system out of which 3.7 GB is in use and 12.1 GB is available. Now we should be able to get similar details in Linux based system using a command called as free. So let's say free here and see the output. In this case, the output is not very readable. Keep in mind that wherever human readability is relevant, there will be a control argument called as hyphen H. So in this case, I can say free hyphen H, which stands for human readable. You should be able to see the output in human readable format. Even though we have 16 GB memory on the Windows based machine, which is also known as host for this uh, guest, 
this linux based system which is set up on top of windows can be treated as guest whereas the windows based system can be treated as host so even though host have 16 gb memory where windows is running for this uh, virtual machine only 8 gb is allocated you can confirm by looking at total it is close to 8 gb here out of this uh, total 8 gb as of now 220 mb is being used by this uh, linux based system 7.4 gb is free available is also 7.4 gb many times available will be greater than free because available is equal to free plus shared plus buffer cache memory that is how you should be able to interpret the output of free command here you can also get usage of free command by saying free hyphen hyphen help you can see that there are quite a few control arguments with respect to free you can go to the details and understand if you want to get the information in bytes you can actually say free hyphen b you can also say hyphen k to get the information in kilobytes you can also say hyphen m to get details in megabit bytes you can also use hyphen h to actually show the output in a human readable format i typically use free hyphen h to get the details about memory on a given system where linux is running that being said as we have gone through the details with respect to cpu and memory now it is time for us to explore commands related to getting details about the storage we'll be covering those details as part of the subsequent lectures in the sectional module in the process of exploring basic system commands to get details related to memory cpu storage etc on a linux based system so far we have gone through the details related to uh, cpu and memory now it is time for us to go through the details related to storage Keep in mind that the Linux based machine is set up on top of Windows as a guest. The way the Linux based system is set up is by using something called as WSL or Windows subsystem for Linux. When it comes to the host on which Windows is running, there are two drives, C drive and D drive. C drive contain 128 GB of storage whereas D drive contain 32 GB of storage. Now to get these details using the Linux based system, you should be able to use command called as df. you can see the details here when it comes to the output it is showing in bytes if you want to get in a readable format you should be able to use df hyphen h now the output will be in readable format when it comes to the host on which this linux based system is set up you can see that there is only 128 gb in c drive and 32 gb in d drive however if you look at the output if you look at the root file system it is actually showing 250 gb plus here don't worry too much about it ignore it for now to get details about c drive and d drive you have to look at these two entries you see there is something called as drvfs or drive file system you can see size is 128 gb used is 30 gb available is 97 gb in percentage as of now 24 percent is is used and you can see the mount point using which it is actually getting this storage details in this case this mount point is related to the c drive which you are seeing here you can see we have 127 gb here you can also confirm that here when it comes to the c drive it is nothing but 127 gb in similar lines uh, you can actually see the details about d drive when it comes to the d drive it have 32 gb uh, total storage out of which 2.5 is currently being used available is 30 gb this is how you should be able to get details about the all the drives mounted on a linux based system you just need to make sure which drive you should be focusing on to get details which you are looking for you can also actually say df hyphen h and then dot which represents the current working directory to see how much storage is supposed to be used by this drive if you look at the path you can see that this directory it was t is under users which is under mount c which means this is related to this mount point now i should be able to get details about only this mount point let me hit enter you can see that uh, there is 127 gb total storage associated with this mount point on which this directory it was t exists in similar lines you can also go to mnt d then you can run df hyphen h and you can see the details about the mount point associated with this path let's see what we have in this folder there are only system folders and files i don't want to play with them for now we can ignore 
So this is how you should be able to get details about file system. df is very important command to understand the situation of all the mount points that are associated with the Linux based system. In this case, as this Linux is running on top of Windows using WSL, we just need to focus on these two. Depending upon the nature of your Linux based system, you might have to explore different file systems that are associated with your Linux system to get details about how much storage is allocated to the machine and also how much of it is currently being used and how much of it is, is actually available. As we have understood how to get details about storage using df command, let's go to the details related to another important command with respect to storage. It is nothing but du. Du stands for disk usage. I will be covering the details related to du in the next lecture. At this time we are going through the basic Linux commands to get details related to the Linux based system. So far we have gone through the details about CPU using lscpu, memory using free and storage using df command. Another important command with respect to storage is nothing but du. du stands for disk usage. It gives us the details about how much storage is being used by a folder or a file. Now I am in the home folder in this Linux based system. You can actually use pwd command to get the present working directory. It is nothing but home d gajraju. Now when it comes to the disk usage, there is a command called as du. You can hit enter. When it comes to the simple usage of du command, it will just go through all the folders and files recursively and get details about how much storage is occupied by each and every file and folder. Also, it will actually aggregate and give us the details about the folder from which we have ran the du command. You can see that this is the total size occupied by this folder which is nothing but slash home slash dgatheraju. Now let's look at the usage of du command to see what all options it gives. Typically I use s and h. I will emphasize on those two control arguments. Let me say du hyphen hyphen help and then hit enter. We should be able to see the usage of the du command. We can actually go up and look at the control arguments. There are quite a few of them. Whenever we talk about storage or memory, we want to see the details in human readable format. For that we can use hyphen h. This is one of the important control argument with respect to du. Another important control argument is nothing but hyphen yes or hyphen hyphen summarize hyphen hyphen human readable is alias for hyphen h hyphen hyphen summarize is alias for hyphen s so we use hyphen s and hyphen h very often with du command to get details in human readable format and also summarized at the level which we are looking for now let me scroll down here now instead of saying du let me say du hyphen s and hit enter now you can see that it have summarized the overall uh, storage details that is uh, being used by each and every file and folder and you can see the total size here. However, I am not sure whether it is bytes or uh, kilobytes or megabytes etc. To make sure we get the output in a human readable format, I can actually say H. Now you can see that it is showing in human readable format. The actual storage that is occupied by this current folder is nothing but 3.1 GB. If you say df hyphen h, it will actually give us the details about the overall storage of this uh, system. I can also say df hyphen h dot. When it comes to this one, it is under the root uh, file system. As it is under root file system, it is showing 250 GB. But under the hood, it have only 128 GB actual storage. Probably the host uh, drives that are there on Windows system might be configured with concept called as RAID. When it comes to RAID with mirroring, typically the storage will be double. That's why you might be seeing this one. So df-h will give us the details about the overall storage associated with this mount point if you use dot at the end. Whereas du-sh will get details about how much storage is used by this current folder. In this case, slash form slash dgadraju use 3.2 GB out of this 251 GB storage. That being said, now you can also say du-sh star. Instead of recursively going through each and every folder and file and uh, giving us the storage, it will only give us storage at each and every folder level or file level in this folder. You can hit enter and you should be able to see the output. In this folder we have folders as well as files. You can actually run LSF and LTR to confirm. You can see that there are quite a few folders and files. The files are nothing but uh, this one, this one and this one. Rest all are folders only. By using du-sh uh, with star we are able to get aggregated information at each and every folder and file in this folder. The folder is nothing but slash home slash dgatheraju. When it comes to desktop it is nothing but folder. 
it occupies 4 kb storage when it comes to documents it is also a folder and it occupies 4 kb storage when it comes to downloads it is also a folder and it occupies 1.8 gb storage also when it comes to data it occupies 631 mb storage when it comes to order underscore status which is nothing but a file it occupies 716 kb out of all the commands that give system details such as lscpu free df du du is the most effective command in troubleshooting the storage related issues i'll be walking you through quite a few tasks to understand the importance of du make sure you are really comfortable with du you should be not only comfortable with du but also how to integrate with other important commands and troubleshoot the issues we'll be performing quite a few tasks from that perspective make sure you follow the subsequent lectures in this section and be comfortable with all those scenarios which i'm going to cover at this time we are going through the details about basic system commands to get details such as cpu memory storage etc so far we have explored ls cpu for cpu free for memory and also df and du for storage that being said du is very powerful command it helps us troubleshooting issues related to the storage many times our hard drives might fill for several reasons we might want to understand which folder is actually taking up more amount of storage and one of the ways to troubleshoot the issue is by using du command however we need to use du with commands such as sort in conjunction then we should be able to get the information we are looking for in this lecture as well as few subsequent lectures let's understand how to use du in conjunction with commands such as sort to get insights about the utilization of storage in our systems so in this case i am using the linux based system that is set up on top of windows i have a folder called as data let me get into that data folder now i can actually say du hyphen sh and then a dot it will give the summary of the folder which i am in you can actually see the details the overall storage of this folder is nothing but 631 megabytes you can see here now there are quite a few folders here if i say ls ltr we should be able to see all the folders and also file in this we are not sure about uh, each and every folder how much storage uh, they are occupying so one of the ways is by saying du hyphen sh star now you can see the output here the file readme.md is of size 4 kb when it comes to cards it is of size 25 MB. Election results is 872 KB. HR is 44 KB. HR underscore DB is 152 KB, so and so forth. Many times we want to see the top occupying folders or files at the bottom or at the top. To get those details, we might have to pipe the output of du command to sort and we should be able to see the results. Now in this case, if I just say du hyphen sh star and then use sort command, it will actually sort the data based on the alphanumeric characters that are there in the size. You can see that 134 megabytes came at the top and 95 megabytes came at the bottom because 9 is greater than 1. So data is actually sorted in ascending order by uh, alphanumeric characters that are there in the size rather than the numeric values. To make sure data is sorted based upon the numeric values, you can actually say sort hyphen n and hit enter now you can see that the output is changed but still because 872 is bigger than uh, 152 or 134 it came at the last however 134 megabytes is large in size compared to 872 kb you can use this approach however you need to make sure you remove h so that the larger files come at the bottom so in this case i can say du hyphen s without h then star star will ensure data is uh, summarized at each and every folder level let me remove this uh, sort hyphen n let me run this first you can see the output here it have actually presented the data in the form of kilobytes here the default behavior is to display the sizes in kilobytes now i should be able to use sort and we should be able to sort the data keep in mind that data is sorted using alphanumeric uh, values not numeric values that are there as part of the first field in this to make sure data is sorted numerically rather than alphanumerically we just have to use sort hyphen n now we should be able to see the output here this is how you should be able to deep dive and understand which folder is uh, occupying how much storage and also you should be able to narrow down to larger folders or files at the bottom by combining uh, du hyphen s output with sort this is a very simple one-liner which will facilitate us to get the usage of our storage effectively we have combined the power of two very important commands they are nothing but du and sort you just need to have a bit of understanding about these commands and you should be able to solve very complex problems that being said now let me go one level up let me run du u hyphen s star then sort hyphen n let me hit enter 
we should be able to get the details about the size of each and every folder and file in this location in ascending order by the size of each and every file and folder. Let's wait until it is run, then we'll take it further. It will take time based upon the amount of data it is supposed to be sorted. Now you can review the output here. Downloads is the largest folder which is occupying 1.8 GB followed by data which occupies 646 MB followed by projects which occupies 266 MB so and so forth. You should now be able to get into the downloads folder and see what all folders and files are actually taking up storage in downloads folder and you can actually start cleaning up downloads folder. Let me go to the downloads folder here. Now let's run ls-ltr. You can see that there are only two entries. One is file, second one is folder. Now we should be able to run command saying du-sh star. Now we should be able to see the details. The folder contains 1.3 GB of data, whereas this file is 482 MB in size. This is how we should be able to get the details about the folders and files with respect to size and we can understand how much storage is being occupied by these files and folders. If you want, now you can actually get into this folder called as PyCharm Community 2021.3.3. Then let's run ls-ltr. You have several folders and files in this. Now I can say du-sh star. And hit enter, you should be able to see the size of each and every folder and file in this location. Lib is the folder which is taking most amount of storage followed by plugins, then followed by JVR so and so forth. Let's see quite a few examples to understand the power of DU to troubleshoot issues related to wasting the storage on our systems. I'll also go through the details using my Mac. You can also apply this on top of Windows, provided you have a Linux virtual machine on top of Windows and Windows storage is mounted onto that. You can actually follow whatever I'm going to demonstrate on Mac on your Windows as well using Linux uh, on top of Windows. Let's go through the details so that you understand what I'm talking about here. At this time, we are going through the details about basic system commands to get details about our systems, such as CPU, memory, storage, etc. Now, we are actually performing tasks to troubleshoot the issue of how our storage is being spent. Now, let me actually walk you through the details about how to leverage Linux that is set up using WSL to troubleshoot the issue on top of folders such as downloads or even other folders on Windows based system. First you need to understand how Windows folders are actually exposed onto these virtual machines and then we can take it further. Let me exit from here. In this case I am in the PowerShell. You can see that uh, the path is nothing but C drive user site university. This is nothing but home folder on Windows. And here you have a folder called as downloads. You can see the downloads folder here. If you want to get the storage details about this downloads folder, you can actually launch WSL provided you have set up a Ubuntu based system using WSL. In this case, the default system is nothing but Ubuntu 1. I have only one. You can see the star here. If I say WSL, it will actually get into this Ubuntu based machine. And by default, in Ubuntu also, we'll be getting into this folder. You can see that it is saying mount C. C drive is represented as mount C in Linux because Linux doesn't have the concept of C drive, D drive, etc. Underneath mount C, you have users, then followed by IT varsity. Now, if I say ls ltr, it will actually return all the folders which you have seen earlier. It also provides some additional details. You can ignore those additional details for now. Now, you can actually say du sh downloads to get the details about the downloads folder. You can see that the downloads folder in my case is 5.6 MB. In your case, you might end up uh, having a lot more uh, folders and files than me. The size might be quite bigger. If you think there are quite a few files which are not necessary, to see which files and folders are wasting the storage and if you want to clean up those things using the du command in combination with sort we should be able to identify those larger folders or files and we can take it further. Now you can actually go to downloads then you should be able to run lsf and ltr to see all the folders and files. I have only files here. I don't have any folders. Using ls command itself, we should be able to get size of the files. But if you have folders, you will not be able to get size of those folders. Now I can say du hyphen s star, then sort hyphen n. I should be able to get the files in ascending order by size. Now I should be able to delete the larger files if they are not required. It is applicable even with folders. Now let's understand how these folders and files are represented in Windows. For that I'm actually going into the file explorer. I have opened the file explorer. I have the downloads folder. In this case we can actually see the size of the files and we should be able to sort the data by size or by kind so and so forth. Even we can sort the data by dates. 
That being said, when it comes to folders, you will not be seeing the sizes here. That's where the combination of du and sort comes handy. Now let me go to the other folder, let's say documents. There's only one file. I don't have many files and folders in the system. I don't use that often. But uh, when it comes to the folders, you will not be seeing the size. For example, let's say downloads here. Now let me create a folder. New folder archive. Now let me copy these files into it. When it comes to folders, you will not be seeing the size here. You will get the details about the folder size and all once you hover your mouse onto it or when you actually look at the properties. You can see more details here. The size is 5.5 MB and also it contains three files. You should be able to troubleshoot the details related to the sizes of these folders and files using properties. Then you should be able to delete. However, if you have too many folders and files, troubleshooting the sizes and deciding whether to delete or not can be very time consuming. We should be able to use the combination of du with sort and we should be able to get those files and folders which are larger in size at the bottom and then we can actually troubleshoot further what should be retained, what should be deleted and we can take the required action. That is what we are trying to achieve. Now let me move on to my Mac and see how I am going to troubleshoot the issues. You can actually follow the similar steps using your Windows as well. I am just trying to make it interesting. I will be demonstrating using Mac. You can actually implement using Linux on top of your Windows based system. As we have understood quite a few details with respect to du, let's go to the details about how to use du along with sort to troubleshoot some of the complex issues. We can also use du with find. I will also go to the details about using find along with du to actually troubleshoot the issues much deeper. That being said, let me open the terminal here. Let me close the existing terminal and then let me open again. Keep in mind that even though I am going through the details using downloads of my Mac because I don't have enough files on Windows and Linux that is set up on top of Windows, you should follow me and you should be able to troubleshoot your issues. The way you can actually go to the downloads folder is once you launch WSL, make sure you are in the home directory of your Windows, then you should be able to go to the downloads folder, then you should be able to run the commands which I am going to demonstrate using my Mac. Now I am in the home directory on my Mac. I am actually getting into downloads folder. Let's run ls-ltr. You can see that it have listed all the files and folders in downloads folder. You should be able to run similar command as part of your Linux based system that is set up on top of your windows to actually troubleshoot the issues on your windows downloads folder. That being said, now we should be able to get the total size of this downloads folder by saying du-sh then dot hit enter. You can see that my downloads folder is 794 MB. Now I would like to see which files or folders are actually occupying most amount of storage. For that, I should be able to say du hyphen s star. It will give us the size with respect to each and every file and folder. Uh, to make sure we get larger files and folders at the bottom, we should be able to run command called as uh, du hyphen s star sort hyphen n. Now you can see larger files at the bottom. If you want to make this information a little bit readable, you can actually say du-sk uh, or m which will actually give us the output in megabytes not kilobytes. The default is kilobytes. Now we are actually trying to get the output in megabytes. Now you can see here it have given the output in megabytes. PyCharm community blah 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 is 480 megabyte whereas when it comes to KB it is actually 982,160 KB. I think there is some difference with respect to what is being shown here without uh, hyphen m and with hyphen m. 982,160 KB will not convert to 400 plus MB. So this could be something else. It need not be kilobytes. Don't worry too much about it. You just use hyphen m like this. Everything will be converted to megabytes and you should be able to see the data in megabytes. However, all those files which are under one megabyte, it is actually showing it as one here. Now, that being said, this is how you should be able to get the largest files at the bottom. If you feel these are not relevant anymore, you can delete these files. Now, let me actually run du-sh dot once again. The overall size is nothing but 794 MB. Now, let's go ahead and delete some of the files which are not relevant. This is not relevant. This is also not relevant. This is also not relevant. This is related to PyCharm. Once we download, we have already installed PyCharm. This is related to VMware client. This is related to FileZilla. All these three are not important anymore on this machine and hence I am deleting these. 
for that i should be able to use rm command i should be able to copy paste this one then copy paste this one and also copy paste this one now let me run it all the three files are deleted now we should be able to say du hyphen sh dot and hit enter you can see that we have reclaimed almost 500 plus megabytes of storage on this machine like this we should be able to navigate to the folders and clean up all those files which are occupying too much of storage provided those files are not important anymore now let's go one level up let's run ls hyphen ltr you can see that there are quite a few folders in this home directory as of now i am in my home directory now i should be able to say du hyphen sh then dot to get overall storage that is occupied by my account let's wait until it is run you can see that there are quite a few files under my home directory for which my account doesn't have access you also might run into uh, permission related issues on some of the files and folders for now ignore them look at the bottom the size of this folder is nothing but 89 gigabytes now to troubleshoot which folder is occupying most amount of storage we should be able to say du hyphen sh star hit enter we can see the output here but there are quite a few errors there is a way to bypass these errors for now you just follow this don't worry too much if you don't understand i'll be covering the details at a later point in time after saying du space uh, hyphen sh then space then star you leave a space and then use uh, two like this then have a greater than symbol like this then say slash dev slash null then hit enter now you can see that the errors are gone the errors are not displayed but we are able to get the details about the sizes of each and every folder and file that being said we should be able to use du hyphen s m like this to get the output in megabytes then we should be able to say sort hyphen n to get the largest folders or files at the bottom you can see library is the largest one which is taking away 66 gb of storage then movies around 17 gb so and so forth this is how you should be able to get details about the usage of your hard drive with these files and folders it is a very powerful mechanism you should be comfortable with it it will come handy in many ways not only to maintain the files and folders better on your systems but also when you actually get into the projects whenever you run into storage related issues you should be able to solve problems using this simple approach that being said now we have so many folders and files we would like to see which files are actually taking away too much of storage without navigating to folders one at a time we should be able to leverage find in conjunction with du to get the details we'll go to those details as part of the next lecture at this time we are going through the details about using du command to understand the usage of our files and folders in our systems i'm actually demonstrating using mac you should be able to use linux on top of windows also to actually go to the folders and files in windows that being said i am currently in the home directory as part of the previous lecture i have ran this command it took care of uh, giving the details about the size of uh, each and every folder in megabytes. The largest one is library followed by movies, projects, etc. Now let's say we'd like to troubleshoot which file is larger in movies. One of the ways is to go to each folder and validate, but it is not a very effective way of uh, understanding which file is larger. We should be able to leverage the combination of find command and du command and we should be able to get the details about the size of the files in ascending order. We can actually get the largest files at the bottom by going through all the folders recursively in movies. Let's go to the details so that you understand what I'm talking about here. First, let's see how many files we have in this movies folder. For that, we should be able to use find command like this, find movies, then hyphen type f. It will give us the details about all the files. You can hit enter and you can see. Now you should be able to say pipe wc hyphen l to get the number of files. We have 196 files. These 196 files constitute almost 17 GB in size. You can actually say du hyphen sh movies. You can see that the size of movies is 17 GB. Now let's say we would like to explore which file is actually occupying most amount of storage. We should be able to use the same find command. This will actually give us the individual files. Now we should be able to use hyphen exec. We should be able to pass any command to hyphen exec which is compatible with files that are written using find command in this case we should be able to use du command to get size of each and every file so i can say du then i should be able to use curly braces like this then plus then semicolon hit enter now you can see the 
size of each and every file in MB or actually in uh, whatever default unit it is. To get in MB, I should be able to use hyphen M like this. It will give us the sizes of these files in MB. However, you can see that the data is not sorted. To make sure data is sorted, we have to use the same find command. However, we have to remove the semicolon at the end, then pipe, then we have to say sort hyphen n. Now we should be able to get the largest file at the bottom. The largest file is nothing but this one. Now let me get into this movies, then Camtasia 2021, then temporary recordings. Then let me run LSF and LTR. Now let me say du hyphen sh star. You can see there's one file which is more than 16 GB. Now we should be able to delete this file if it is not relevant anymore. It is shooted on 15th December 2021. If it is just lying around, if I'm not using it, then we should not be wasting our stories like this. I can just say RM and then I should be able to say rec, then 12-15-2021, then space 25.trec. As there are spaces in the file name, we have to escape space like this. Otherwise, it will try to look for the files with rec name, then this name, then this name. By escaping the spaces, this entire string will be considered as one. There is a file with that name and hence that file will be deleted. Now the file is deleted. Let me go up to the uh, home folder. Now let me say du-sh movies. Earlier it was occupying 17 GB of storage. Now it is only 564 MB. By just spending few minutes, we are able to reclaim almost 16 and half GB of storage, which is being wasted for quite some time. This is how you should be able to manage your storage using these simple commands. The command which I have used to troubleshoot is nothing but this one. It have given me the details about the files in ascending order by size that are part of movies folder. Using this approach, I'm able to get the data sorted in ascending order by size. I'm able to figure out there is one file which is occupying almost 16 and half GB of storage. I have reviewed whether it is relevant or not. As it is not relevant, it is deleted. That being said, now if I say du hyphen s or du hyphen m, then star, then sort hyphen n. Let me use the command which I have used earlier, which is nothing but this one, where the errors are redirected to null device. Now let's review the output here. Let's also go to the library folder. Be careful when you try to touch folders such as library because uh, you will be deleting some important folders which can cause issues to your operating system. Library is supposed to be system folder. However, at least you will know which folders or files are actually occupying too much of storage and uh, you can actually work with uh, your Apple support or Windows support to make sure you clean up those things in a graceful manner. That being said, let's go to the details about how to understand the uses of different files and folders in library. For that, again, we can leverage the same command which you have seen earlier, which is nothing but this one. Let's clean up movies, replace it with library. Let's run this. It will go through all the files and it will give us the sizes in ascending order by getting the sizes in MB. You can see that Docker is the culprit. Docker is taking away almost uh, 42 GB of storage. That too, docker.raw. It can be a file system which is being used by one of the Docker containers on my system. This is how you should be able to troubleshoot the issues related to which files are actually consuming most amount of storage on your system. It will definitely add value to your uh, daily usage of your system. Make sure you are comfortable with commands such as find, du, etc. In this case, with the usage of simple commands such as find, du, sort, etc., we are able to figure out which files are actually taking away too much of storage. If the files are not important, we should be able to clean up and reclaim the storage. That being said, this video will be broadcasted in the social platforms. In case if you put in practice and able to reclaim some storage, feel free to share your experience in the social platforms. We'll be motivated to create more and more content like this, which can be used as part of your day-to-day -day usage.